Every time I graph a trigonometric function, which has been modified in some way, the place you've got to begin, and this is why we started there on Monday morning, is with the original version of the graph before it was modified. And then you think about in what way you need to change it, and then there's your new graph. So here's regular tan x. Okay? I've drawn it from 0 to 360, like so. Tan x is a little bit different from sine and cosine in that its period is not 360 degrees. What is the period of tan? 180. It's 180. And you can see, if I divide it right there, down the middle, do you see that to the left of the black line and to the right of the black line, they're identical. Do you see that? Okay, so you get the copy, and then you get another copy. Okay? Now just keep that in the back of your mind. When you come and see this, right? the way I would write this is like so. Minor difference, but it helps me remember. Bless you. Bless you. What this thing is doing is it's just like tan x, but it's working at one third of the speed. Okay? It's been stretched out three times further because it's going at a third of the progression. Okay? So for example, have a look at where my first asymptote appears. See there? At 90 degrees. Okay? This guy takes a lot longer than 90 degrees to get to that asymptote. It takes him three times longer. So the asymptote for this graph that appears first will not be at x equals 90. It'll actually be at x equals 270. Okay? That's the first asymptote. Now, when I think about a third, basically what you're doing is, take this from 0 to 360. What's a third of 360? It's 120, right? So all you have to do is take this guy and take him up to 120 degrees. That's how much of tan x you'll get for this guy, exactly a third. Now have a look, help me out. This is 180 here. So if you had to roughly place 120, where would you put it? This is 90 over here, right? What's exactly halfway between 90 and 180? Exactly halfway. I'm pretty sure it's 135, right? That's not the angle I want. I actually only want 120. You actually have to divide this into thirds, right? Roughly anyway, okay? Because then it'll be 30, 30, 30, right? So where is the 120 line? Let me show you. There we go. That's 120. Do you agree? Like, it's 90 plus a little bit. Oops. 120. And it stops at that weird awkward position. Okay? Now, what you've just drawn, that's the graph you're supposed to do, except it's not from 0 to 120. It'll be this stretched out version. Okay? So I'm just going to really quickly draw up my new set of axes. And can you see, I can roughly break this up into quarters. Do you see? If I go 30, 60, 90, 120, right? I can break that thing up into quarters. The reason why quarters is important to me is because I normally break this thing up into quarters, right? 90, 180, 270, 360, okay? So that thing is going to stretch out all the way to hit 360, except that's all I get of it. Where's the vertical asymptote? You already told me. 270, that's here. Okay, so far so good. That shape in there is what I get before I get to the asymptote. So it stretches out like that. Okay? Then you get this weird bit over here, which sort of starts and then goes whoop, like that. Do you agree that this is just a stretched out version of that? So far so good? Okay, now I've done the bare bones of it. I'm just going to put in a little more detail to fill it out. On tan x, I usually have a point for scale. What's my normal point for scale? Uh, 45 degrees for the x value and 1 for the y value. It's right here. But this new graph I've got is 3 times slower. So instead of taking 45 degrees to get there, what's 3 times 45? It's 135, right? 135 uh, should be there, right? So by the time you get to 135, oh, at last, now you're at 1. There's my point for scale. Okay? But because of the way I've sliced the graph, I've also sliced it here. And I need to know what this spot is. Faithfully, I know what the x value is, so I can work out the y value. 
y equals tan of 360 degrees on 3. Do you see that's my x on 3? Yep. That's tan of 120 degrees. Okay, think, think. This is in which quadrant? This is in the second quadrant. So therefore, whatever's going to be out of here is negative. It had better be negative. Look, see, it's, it's down here. It's negative. How do I work out the actual value? Just what's, the, what's the base angle or the acute related angle? The acute angle that relates this is 60, isn't it? Now, I know you can chuck this in your calculator if you want, but you really need to practice knowing what these things are. Okay? So I'm going to draw uh, 30, 60, 90. Can someone tell me what sides to put on this thing? Uh, Eric. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, because sine 30 is a half. Yes, which makes the last one in 3. Okay, 1060, can you read it off for me? Opposite on adjacent. Yes? Minus root 3. Okay, so now I know where this is. Uh, here we go. There you go. Which, because of the sheer awesomeness of my graph, it's 1.7. Not bad considering I just kind of freehanded it. Okay? Uh, because you're doing it on there with a ruler and lines and that kind of thing, you're going to expect to get that distance roughly right because that scale needs to be consistent. Does that make sense? <laughs>